Um, so just before we start, Wesley, I was going to say, because you once, like years and years ago, you very almost made a film with my uncle, who was a director who made, he was going to do a temp, the, the Tempest, he was going to do a um, an adaptation of it. And then, and I always remember, oh, you, yeah, yeah. you left a voicemail on his message and at the end you just said, I'm going to be like Mercury now and I'm going to fade away. <laughs> <laughs> Greatest voicemail I've ever heard. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. Well, <laughs> you and, and, and shout outs to your uncle, right? Uncle. Yeah, yeah. uncle. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, anyway, I should probably, I'll get started because I know I've got too long uh, today, but I'm going to, my first question, uh, I guess I'll start with you, Keith. Um, it's just, what, what can you tell us about The Exiled? What's the, what's the premise? What's the idea to, to this graphic novel? Absolutely. Yeah, The Exiled is, uh, it's a sci-fi noir graphic novel. Um, it's kind of a blend between Seven and Blade Runner. It's about this hard-boiled detective, this guy Niles Roach Washington, who's pursuing this serial killer with this brutal motive and this dark agenda. And he's removing the spines of his victims, but he's using these tools that are over 5,000 years old. And so despite all these warnings, Roach's instincts and sense of survival keep pushing him forward. And he just dives deeper into the darkness to find this killer. And ultimately, this uncovers Earth's darkest secret. And so the story has lots of twists and turns. And over the pursuit of the serial killer, um, it kind of reveals uh, Roach's goals of defending Earth from this greater enemy. And so uh, we created the story with, uh, with Wesley, Adam Lawson, and myself. And uh, we're doing this, uh, launching this initially independently um, as a Kickstarter campaign that is now turning into a publishing uh, um, launch with Whatnot. And we're wrapping up our campaign at the end of this month at San Diego Comic-Con. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm sold on that premise. <laughs> but, um, Wesley, how did you and Keith first meet? How, when, what ignited this creative collaboration between you two? We actually met through another artist. Uh, the world is small, you know what I'm saying? It's six, <clears throat> six degrees of separation from people. And long, long, long time ago, we actually worked together on one of the, I think it was Demolition Man, I think it was Demolition the Man. And, uh, but fast forward to the future, uh, to present. Um, we, there was another artist that I knew through some friends in New York who happened to be working with Keith at the time, introduced us, and I got geeked out not only by, you know, his art and his professionalism, but I, his imagination and, and what we call uh, his day you know, his hyphenated skill master qualities. I got really geeked by that. And that's how it began, you know. I appreciate a, a person who has an artistic mind, but also a technical mind mm. at the same time. Yeah. Uh, Keith, I was going to ask back to this on the X side. I mean, often you, with dark kind of supernatural sort of tales, they provide such an insight into the world we know. I always believe the best way to understand the world is to step right out of it. Uh, what does the X side tell us about, about life as we know it? I think the big thing is that nothing is what it seems. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we're not alone. Yeah, I, I think that a lot of people uh, typically take things at face value and when they see gore or they see violence or they see someone's motives, they think they have figured that out. And one of the things that I think we love and, and something that, that Wesley and Adam and myself really felt was this, this book and this series is sort of like peeling back the layers of an onion and digging deeper into this and exposing you know a whole new premise. And just when you think you, you figured it out, it actually flips it on its, on its edge. And so it, it does tell us a lot about our society and what we're going through. Even the pandemic and other things are really interestingly reflective of what we're going through now and also happens in the book. And so I think a lot of people will connect to even though it, it starts off with a kind of a, a dark, gruesome tale. It actually uh, is very meaningful. and I think people will, will relate to uh, to Roach's character and, and what he's going through through the exile. Yeah. Uh, Wesley, how's it been being so involved right from the very start? Because obviously as, as an actor, you're so used to coming on board at a later date, you know, as is usually the case. How, has it been quite an enlightening and enjoyable experience to kind of help create Roach and build this world? Interestingly enough, it's not my first rodeo in that space and creating independent projects. I've done both documentaries as well as film, but it's always rewarding because you get to start off early you get to really contribute. It's almost like the, I equate it to being a musician or even an artist, a painter. You get to contribute to what the project and what the product will ultimately be. And often you get to see the end result the way you imagined it, you know, or at least close to the way that you imagined it. So it's very, very rewarding. 
the most coolest, the most coolest, the most coolest part <laughs> is working with uh, hyphenated skill masters like Keith, mm -hmm. you know, and these guys who are so Adam, who are, are diversified in their abilities and very creative and soulful people. You know, to have to be able to do that at the same time and to create something wonderful while working with people you like and respect is a it's a rarity in the business and it's truly a gift. Yeah, it's the magic combo. But did this did this experience take you back a little bit to like to to, to making Blade, for example? Because because you're getting into the origin story of a character, because that's always my favorite part of any superhero tale is the origin. I always love finding out how they came to be. So when making and creating the Exile, did it did it take you back at all to, to those days? Oh yes, oh yes. Oh, it took took me all the way even back to the early days of uh, being in college in theater art school. And you have to create the play, or you have to create the one-man show to graduate. <laughs> so, uh, I, yeah, it, it, it definitely takes me back there. What was your one-man show to, that you graduated with? <laughs> I, did, I did a kind of thing, man. I did a, a musical piece, and I did a, a drama, a dramatic piece. Yeah, but we wrote it. You know, I've been doing that actually since I was maybe 15 years old in Orlando, Florida. We were doing bus and truck shows, performances around the. The, the community parks throughout Winter Park in Orlando, Central Florida. And uh, yeah, the, <laughs> I was gospel running around in tie dye and, and tambourines. <laughs> so. I think, and, and I think it's interesting working in this medium. I mean, working as a graphic novel and comics, you can visualize not just the story and the world, but develop the characters in this very interesting, even though it's it's drawn, um, it's very interactive. And the, the idea that the that the reader is engaged with you and experiencing these characters in real time, right? Because they can't progress the story unless they turn the page, right? And so us as creators, we get to craft that experience. And when you're writing a script or when you're making the film, you have um, sort of different skill sets being applied. And in a graphic novel, you're sort of responsible for everything, right? From the writing to the visual side to performances. And uh, and our hope is, you know, that this uh, will grow into other mediums and we are adding in interactivity and uh, we have uh, digital sort of codes and clues and a whole ARG scavenger hunt built into our campaign. And the idea is that the audience will continue to go on this journey with Roach throughout this. So it kind of goes back to our skill sets of being able to, say, you know, Adam is a, an amazing writer and a, and a showrunner and myself being a writer and a, and a director and, and Wes being a, a writer and a creator and a performer and mixing all this together. When we creatively vibe, that's when all the sparks fly. I'm a sucker for like hidden codes. <laughs> I love, <laughs> love all that sort of stuff. But um, so what? Well, you know, it's, like, it's like bringing. It's like riding on the this resurgence of murder mysteries. Yeah. And but with some interactivity. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I mean, you guys, you mentioned obviously that there's a kind of Kickstarter campaign. What the backers potentially get by supporting this endeavor? I know sometimes it's like little initiatives, aren't there, to people that that like that support the project. We, we actually designed the campaign, not just for season collectors, but also for first time backers, because a lot of people are still very new to, back, to, to Kickstarter and how to back campaigns. Um, so we really wanted to find people who were gonna come on the journey with us. So they're gonna get uh, this campaign only oversized format book, which is like eight and a half by 13. And it's the only way to get it. Um, it's not gonna be sold on store in stores or online. And so we have all these other collectibles depending on the different tiers that you sign up for. And um, we funded, I think the campaign within the first 60 minutes. Um, and now we're already, I think uh, five or six times over our goal just in the first two weeks. Um, but our goal is that this version and this, this, uh, I, all the items that we're sort of offering in the initial launch are only going to be for the initial backers. And then we'll have different versions that will be released through Whatnot and, and our other partners. Nice. Yeah, congratulations on hitting that guy. I mean, it's so encouraging just to know there's still such a huge appetite because in the world where there's so much competition on streaming services and a wealth of great TV and film, which I'm not complaining about, is there just something quite classic and traditional about just sitting down and reading something? <laughs> It is. And, yes. and having the, the input of the creators, you know, directly. And letting your imagination run wild. You know, the freedom of, of reading something is that your imagination can fill in the blanks. 
I always find it's the most, it's, it's the, always the, the kind of the art form that makes me think the most, even more so than anything else. Uh, have you always been a big comic book fan, Wesley? Have you always, ever since you were a child? Uh, I can say, I can say, you know, I can't claim to be a super comic book fan. You know, I, I used to like comic books for the artwork and to try to do, to try to draw the characters on a, on a grid, on grid paper, mm-hmm. you know, but I can't say, I can't claim if you came, I got, I have all of the Blades uh, comic books and maybe use some of the, their devils, but if you're a real comic book fan would be mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Keith? Was it a big part of your childhood? Uh, it was uh, not as much as like, obviously the traditional Marvel and, and uh, DC collectors. Um, I got into writing books about 20 years ago. I was a real, I, I was a big fan of Arkham Asylum. That was probably the book that kind of changed my attitude towards comics because I love the painterly style and, and sort of that sort of uh, affinity of bringing it into a world. And like what Wes was saying, let your mind fill in so much of the stuff that was there. And so um, that, that was my kind of my gateway drug into comics and graphic novels. And, uh, and I really love graphic novels in the sense that I could get the complete vision of that artist and, and writer's story. And so when I started creating Ascend and uh, Dead Speed and Infects, I was focused on that, like creating these experiences with people. And uh, that's how Adam and I had come together. And Wesley was also doing stuff. Uh, there was a book that he was doing with Antoine Fuqua, right? It was um, After after Dark. And yeah, that's- we published that a decade ago, I think. Now. Yeah. And then we had reconnected through that publishing company. And that was really the spark that said, hey, what if we take this idea that we're working with and put that together? And that was really where we started thinking about putting this together. Yeah. And so for, for both of you, are you just thinking about this now as just as a comic book for now, just as a graphic novel? Are there, are there thoughts where this could go further down the line? When do, when do you allow those ideas of maybe one day could this be an animated series or a live action movie? When do those ideas start brewing? Or have they started brewing already? <laughs> Probably before we started. <laughs> I, I think we all love the idea of seeing this on the screen in some format. We've already been playing around and doing stuff here in the studios, um, recording some stuff and putting that together. And we've been approached by several people to ask that same question. And I think that we really want to see this uh, this story expand because it's such a deep, uh, many levels behind this and lots of amazing characters. And the story really spans quite a bit of time. So uh, I think we're looking forward to exploring other mediums for sure. Yeah. So, so oh, Wesley, you know, I, you know I am. <laughs> so, <laughs> So if you if you guys had to cast Roach, who would get the nod right now? <laughs> to cast Roach. Hmm. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. I know a guy, but I don't know if he's available. He's 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 pretty busy doing this comic yeah. book right now. Yeah. But uh yeah, I mean the the fun, funny thing is if you see the new heavy metal cover, we did a heavy metal inspired uh kind of collector's piece, and it's awesome. I mean you see Wesley there like front and center holding these guns and it's all like neon and green and it's fantastic. Um, I think we really went, you know, uh, knowing Wesley at, as a as the, the private individual he is and his on screen persona that he's had for so many things. Uh, Wes embodies so much of what we see as Roach because Roach is this character who knows how to survive, he's got amazing instincts, he's not always seen for what he's trying to achieve and then, you know, and then delivers. And and it's great because working with with, with Wesley and, and doing some of these recordings we've been doing together and getting a chance to actually spar and perform together, it's amazing to see just the level of performance that that's there. So. So yeah, uh, he's got my vote. <laughs> yeah, no, I was gonna say, I was gonna ask Wesley if you if you do it, but I just didn't want to assume. That's why I said, who would you? Call? <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, Wesley. I mean, comics are such uh, as, as for adults, they're a real nostalgic experience for so many people. So they're something that takes you back. I just wanted to know, are you quite a nostalgic person? Because as someone who's got so much of their life on screen, do you ever find yourself going back and watching old movies that you've made, or is, is, is that very much kind of in the past? I don't really watch stuff that I've done. I watch stuff that other people have done. More so, um, yeah. I'm not nostalgic in the in the in the process in that sense. The fact that we did it before sometimes ends the story, and then I want to move on and move up and keep elevating with 
expanded uh, abilities or a better product. No, no, I can't say I'm too nostalgic about my stuff. Although I have children now, hallelujah. And it's funny to see some of the stuff that I've done. Now they're old enough to see some of the R-rated films I've done in the past. <laughs> so it's kind of a trip to see, to watch some of the movies with them. <laughs> see it through their eyes. Um, yeah. just, like, but just very finally, I mean, you sort of say not, maybe not too nostalgic, but how is it having like little old reunions now? Because I mean, of course, you had the white man can't jump one at the Oscars. It must be great catching up with, because you share these little bonds, don't you, for a little period. Oh, it must be great oh, to meet to see Woody and Rosie again. And we stay friends and we stay connected outside of production or outside of award shows. So it's always a, a blast. You know, we, we, we all feel thankful for the work we've done in the past. But I can be honestly say we are the creative, kind of the creative people who are constantly looking for what we are going to do in the future, what the future offers, how we keep expanding and growing on our our strengths. It's hard to go back and see your creative work because you, you you constantly reanalyze it and look at it and criticize it and say I can do better than this and yeah. you know no great work is ever finished it's just abandoned right you can just keep reworking and reworking and rewriting and reperforming and so most of the creative people you know, in the community are the same way, right? We just, we do work, it's our past and we're always looking to the next thing. Yeah. Well, yeah, well if the next thing is the XR, then there's some, it's a, it's a lot of exciting things to come. I'm really looking forward to, to getting my hands on a copy, but thank you so much guys for speaking to me. So today. Much. Where are you at, my friend? Where are you at? I'm in London. You're in London now, okay. Yeah. All right, a lot of stuff going on right over there. Right? Well, all right. Right. <laughs> you know, stuff going on here. It's been a weird day today, but it's been, it was, I, I've spent all day just watching the news. I, I can never say I watch the news and enjoy it, but today's been an exception. Yeah. <laughs> it's all gone crazy. But, um, but for, anyway, best, I better go because I'm sure you guys got lots to get on with. But thanks again and good luck. Nice. Maybe, we'll, maybe we'll catch up when the movie comes out. <laughs> sooner, sooner, sooner. Cool. All right. Yeah, take, take care. care. Thank you. Cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!